So if you're into betting on horse racing, there's a few things that will probably interest you. One of them would be, how often does the favourite win? And how do you pick a winning favourite when you're betting on horse racing? But also, I'm going to pose a question to you here as well. What happened if you bet on every single favourite over the course of a year? And if you're interested in learning the answers to those questions, then just watch the rest of this video. If you're interested in learning to use BetAngel, head on over to our website where you can download a free trial. If you're interested in learning how to use it, then head over to the BetAngel Academy where you can do exactly that. And if you want to talk to like-minded people, then head on over to our forum. So I've been betting for a large number of years on horse racing, and there are two predominant styles that I follow. One is Betfair Trading, which is basically predicting where the price of the favourite is going to be, and the other is actually betting on those horses outright. But they're two very different styles because when we're Betfair trading, we're looking at volatility, we're looking at the movement in odds. Um, but when we're value betting, we're betting on the chance of something winning or not. And we're looking for an edge in terms of a mispricing within the market. However, the two are actually correlated because typically when you look at betting experts or academics, they say if you can beat the closing line on a horse race, basically the odds uh, as the race is about to start. If you can get better odds than that, then you'll probably make money through betting because you're creating value. You're getting some value in the mix of things. And I actually didn't originally bet on horse racing to start with, but I figured out that over a large number of years, I was beating the closing line consistently. And in fact, I've been doing that now for over 20 years. And that is because I'm trying to work out where the price of the favorite is going. Where is it going to finish just before the start of the race? and I will buy and sell those odds to make money before the race has even started. But that led me to start thinking about what happens if I actually bet on the favorite. So that was something that I've been doing for a large number of years now. So the first thing we should throw out there is that favorites only win one third of the time. Now, if you use a betting exchange, you can bet against favorites by laying them. But traditionally, most people will just back a favorite on the basis that well, it's bound to win very frequently, but it only actually wins one third of the time. And a lot of that is down to whichever type of race that it's running within. Because if we have, say, a group race, a pattern race of some sort, these are horses at the top of their ability. These are uh, the finest beasts on the planet. And as a consequence, you may have a horse that is absolutely incredible. And therefore, it will go off at a very, very short price, simply because it's much better than any of the other horses in the race. So the price on that particular favorite will be very short. It will be at very, very low odds. Now in this video, I'm gonna be using decimal odds. You may be familiar with fractional odds perhaps, but it's quite easy to convert between the two. And if you want to do that, you can go onto the Bet Angel website and we actually have a conversion tool that will convert from one to the other. But basically anything in decimal odds that is below odds of two is odds on, and anything above that is odds against. And if you have a really, really good horse, it will go off at very, very short odds. It may be priced at 1.5, 1.6. And in fact, there have been horses that have gone off significantly shorter than that, simply based upon the fact that they are way better than all of the other horses within the race. Now you do have handicap races as well. And as soon as a horse has run three times, it can get a handicap mark. And a handicap mark is basically allows it to enter handicap races where it's of equal ability against other horses within the race. And as a consequence, the odds on that will be much bigger because fundamentally speaking, the job of the handicapper is to make sure that all of those horses have a chance of winning the race. So when you look at that statistic of only a third of favorites win, it's because of that distribution of odds between races. You get some favorites that are very, very heavy odds on because they're just so good, but there aren't that many of those. And then you get a large number of handicap races, probably about 50% of the card over the course of the year, where those horses are much more equally priced. So as a consequence, when you look at the price of favorites within races, you'll see that they're skewed towards the, um, the higher end of the market. They tend to go off, or the, the most frequent odds that they would go off at are odds of four. And that is simply because they're a favorite in a handicap race. But the distribution of odds is quite wide. And if you add all of those up, together and you divide them by the number of races, you end up with this magical figure of one third. And that is because the market is reasonably efficient and it is a reflection of the chance of each of those horses in each of those races. And it just happens to come out at about a third. So my question for you is in 2023, 
how many favourites actually won over the course of the year. Uh, was it a third? Was it higher than that? Was it lower? Is there any difference to all of that? Exactly how did that pan out? So in 2023, um, I recorded data on 9,263 races in the UK and Ireland. And I would basically look at the price of the favourite and other data as well. Uh, but then we would also see how often the favourite actually went on to win that race. And the remarkable thing is it came out at 33.17. The favourite won one third of the time. Who would have guessed that that would have been the outcome of the actual result? Very consistent over a large number of years. But if you're going to make money, you're more interested in not only how frequently it wins, but what the odds suggest the chance of the favourite is. So generally speaking, what we would do is convert that to a probability. Now, this sounds a little bit confusing if you've never done this before. But again, go on the Bet Angel website and you can convert fractional and decimal odds into probabilities and it will become second nature very quickly. Because what we're saying is we want to get odds on the favourite winning much more than the market is suggesting. Because if we add up all of the odds of the favourites over the course of the year, turn them into probabilities and work out what the average is, it turns out it was 33.51. So the market was suggesting the favourite should have won 33.51% of the time. And in 2003, it actually won 33.17. So there's a, a deficit there. There's a gap between the two. What does that mean? Well, if you put £100 on the favourite in 2023, and every single favourite, this is the graph that you end up with. And you can see it's a little bit disappointing because we have little peaks and troughs within there. Uh, but fundamentally speaking, over the course of the year, the first thing to know is we didn't make any money backing the favourite. It would have actually made sense if you were using a betting exchange to lay the favourites to a level stake. And also you can see that we went through periods where it was catastrophically bad and sometimes it was actually pretty good. But overall, we ended up down over the course of the year. So even though the percentage between what the odds were suggesting and what actually happened within the market was relatively small, um, you can see the effect that that had. You ended up losing a reasonable amount of money over the course of the year. But the interesting thing is this also tells you that in order to leap over that gap, um, you don't have to do much. You just need to be a little bit better than the market in order to be able to make money. But the interesting thing about this is this is the way that most people stake. Most people use level stakes. And this is something that I absolutely do not do. So if you want to make money betting in the long term, if you want a positive expectancy, if you value betting, what you're trying to do is you're trying to align what you're staking to the chance of that particular selection going on to win the race. Probably haven't explained that very well. But you have to align the level of risk you're taking with the level of stake that you've got. So, for example, if a favourite is very likely to win, you want to bet reasonable amounts of money. But if the favourite isn't likely to win, you want to bet smaller amounts. And the advantage of doing this is when the horse doesn't have a great chance of winning that particular race, then the stake starts to go down. However, if the horse has a great chance of winning the race, then the stake goes up. And the advantage of doing this is you align your staking to the chance of the horse winning the race. And if you're getting good odds, then you will win much more frequently and that will end up back in your account. You are no longer at the mercy of whatever the odds are and how frequently that favourite wins. You're directly aligned to the chance of the favourite winning. And if you can get better odds than the chance of the favourite winning, then over the long term, that will end up in your account. The difference between the odds that you're getting and the chance of the favourite winning is the amount of profit that you'll make and that will drop straight into your account. So this is the reason that I... Uh, stake in this particular manner. And in fact, if we rerun that graph that I just showed you, but we don't use level stakes, we use a payout of £100. You look at the graph and it turns out to be completely different. And this is one of those key important steps to being able to make money by betting on horse racing. Now, there are a few ways to do proportional staking, but my preferred method is best demonstrated by looking at the dutching tool in Bet Angel. If we go into a market, uh, we're looking here at a race at Leicester today. We can back with a stake of £100. And you can see what happens here is we stake £100. We lose 100 if everybody else goes on to win, but we win 122 if the favourite goes on to win. However, if we do back for a target profit, then what happens is that the stake changes. So if we backed the favourite, you can see that it would be £81.97. And if we decided to back something at 12s, you can see that we would use a much smaller stake but ultimately return that £100. 
So the reason I'm demonstrating this for you is to show you the impact that this has, but also to show you how to sort of align your stakes to a particular payout. And therefore, if you use this in the long term, your profitability is directly related to the odds at which you're getting on the favourite. So there are many ways to pick off a horse that is a better favourite than just your standard uh, favourite. You know, it could be how they run in a previous race. There may be, you know, there are many different factors um, that it could come into play that will allow you to pick a better winning favourite. However, all of the detail of that it can get quite complicated and requires a much longer video than the one I've got here. But you'll also be pleased to know that I don't think it's the most important thing that you can do. Now I'm joined uh, by Peter Webb of Bet Angel at the betting forum here today in Leopardstown. Peter, what's uh, the best advice that you have for a punter? Um, generally to get the best price that you can. And uh, I think it doesn't matter what research you've done, however you've done it, um, if you can't get the best price, then you'll ever make money. So try and get a good price whenever you have decided on your pick. So let me bring up another graph for you here. And what this graph is actually showing you is exactly the same data that we've seen in the previous graphs. But the only variation that we've got on here is we've got a slightly better price. And to be completely fair and honest with you, I haven't pushed the boundaries of what I would define as a good price here, because all I've said is, in the last two minutes, what would happen if I managed to back at a decent price uh, before this race had actually started? In other words, you know, you saw the price and the favourite was coming down, so you grabbed it before it reached post time, or perhaps the market went out unexpectedly and you grabbed the price there. Sometimes you see markets that just don't make any sense. Everything's fine on course, there are no problems, you know the form lines particularly well, and then all of a sudden you see the price go from here to there to here. So if you're looking to back it, would you back it here or would you back it up there? Of course, you'd back it at the highest price possible. And that's essentially what we're doing when you look at this updated graph. And you can see it's had a dramatic effect on the performance um, of this particular betting strategy over the course of the year. It's made a massive difference. And essentially, this is what I do every day. When I'm actively trading, um, I, I'm looking for points where the market has exhausted itself in either direction, whether the price is too low or the price is too high, and I'm expecting the market to revert to mean somewhat. And it was doing this process that made me figure out that there was probably an edge there uh, when I was actually betting outright as opposed to trading. And as it turns out, that's exactly what I found. So there are a number of factors that can determine whether you're going to profit in horse racing by betting on favourites. Now, if you've got some knowledge of the sport itself, that's helpful because you can sort of say, well, it won last time out and it's run uh, fairly recently. So I think it's going to, you know, the, the rating is going to go up and, you know, you can do those sorts of things. However, in my experience, they're not as important as the other two things necessarily, because you've got to get your staking right. If you stake with level stakes, you're subject to all sorts of factors in the market that you can't control. However, if you stake by using a payout, then it's perfectly possible to align those two and and make things work in your favour. However, getting a decent price is probably the number one thing that you can do. And the great thing about betting exchanges and things like BetAngel is you could put an order in the market and say, well, I can see this favourites at three to one, but I think it really should be priced at four to one. You can pop an order in the market. And if that doesn't get matched, then that's fine. You don't have to bet on the race. Uh, that bet can lapse and then you can move on to the next opportunity. However, as the market meanders around all over the place, it's very likely you'll be able to catch much better rods within the market. And in my experience, that's one of the key factors to being able to profit in the long term. If you can get the best possible odds, uh, then that will differentiate you from what a lot of people do, which is they just turn up, place a level stake on a favourite in the market because they like its name. Uh, they've got absolutely nothing going on uh, in terms of the selection process beyond there, and they don't even try and get the best price. And that's what you see reflected in those statistics that we saw at the beginning. It's something that I've done for a number of years and I've been able to do successfully. And I think that with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of application and effort, you can do the same too.